Praise God. I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. We'd like to finish the portion that we have been working with um, in this chapter 4. So we're going to open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to read this morning verses 7 through 16. Ephesians 4 verses 7 through 16. And the word reads, But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean? but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. My prayer is that God may take this powerful word today and really build it and cause it to penetrate our hearts this morning and build us up in the faith. Amen. We have entitled this part of the message, Equipping and Edifying the Body of Christ. I don't know if you have asked yourself, what is the type of church that grows? What is the kind of church that grows? The kind of church that grows, and and not just in numbers, even though, Growing in numbers is part of the healthy growth of a church. If a church is healthy, it should also grow in different ways, in different degrees, in varying proportions, but it should also add souls to the body of Christ. But on a more general uh, sense, the question remains... What kind of church is the church that is experiencing growth? And the answer to that is a church that is equipped and a church that is edified. A church that is being equipped and a church that is being edified is a church that grows, that begins to engage in a healthy growth in the body or or meaning among its members. The question then is, how is this supposed to happen in church? How is this supposed to happen in church? What is my role as a believer in this process? Do I have a role as a believer in this process? How is it? What are the dynamics of how my being equipped and my being edified is conducive to growth? In the church body. So I propose that we see the dynamics of equipping and edifying the body of Christ for the work of the ministry and its growth in this passage. Number one, 
when we look at verse 7, it says that to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. And then he says in verse 8, therefore, he says, God says, when he ascended on high, speaking of Christ, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. And then he talks about, now this he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. The Lord Jesus came to earth on a rescue mission. He came to rescue who? He came to rescue creatures whose moral duty in life should be about worshiping God and serving Him and adoring Him and representing Him before the community of like creatures. But the problem was that these creatures, this humanity was enslaved. Enslaved by Satan enslaved by sin and death, and we could not be in that enslavement. We were kept from becoming and from being who God created us to be. We could not worship God aright. We have become rebels toward God. We have become estranged from one another, rebels and at war with one another. And this passage here says that Jesus Christ came to set us free and he led captivity captive. He ransomed a people for himself. He set us free by his descending. How did he set us free? He set us free by coming, humbling himself and dying the death that you and I were supposed to die. That you and I deserve to die before a holy God. He came and paid the penalty for our sins. And once he did that, he sent the Holy Spirit with the good news that he had paid the penalty. That no longer humans, men and women needed to be slaves of Satan and of sin and death. Because sin had already been dealt with had already been dealt with at the cross. What kept us enslaved to God? Our sin. Satan used our sin and the death that was a consequence of our sin to keep us away from God and from God's design with one another. Jesus comes, pays the penalty of his blood, of his death, takes our place of the cross, rises so that you and I could be set free and could receive life and now could walk in what God designs for us. So you notice that he descended and then it says that he ascended. He led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Oh, now we come to this point, which is the realization that if we are in Christ, each one of us has been Gifted in him. Each one of us has been gifted by grace so that we may belong in this new creation that God has called us to be a part of. He has gifted each and every one of us. So, well, what is the gifting for? You may say, what is this gifting for? The gifting is so that you may belong in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is eventually what will populate new heavens and new earth. The redeemed will, will be the new creation by which we will inhabit new heavens and new earth. And now God wants us to belong in this body. But in order to belong in this body and grow in it, he has given each one of those redeemed a gift. And the gift is so that we may belong. One of the things that God will one day look at our lives and ask is, what did you do with the gifts that I gave you? And some may say, well, I was involved there in the world. I was town council. 
I was a president of a college. Well, I was, um, I was a counselor at such and such community counseling center. I was a teacher. And God would say, hold on a second. What I'm asking you is, what did you do with the gifts that I gave you to belong in the body of Christ? Pastor, I thought my gifts was just to, to do an occupation, to do a profession. God has given you talents. And God has provided so that you may provide food and engage in society. But ultimately, the gifts of God and the gifting of people that have received grace is that we may proclaim him. And as we proclaim him to the world that we walk in and those souls become saved so that then we may, through the gifts of the Spirit in our lives, build each other up. Help one another. Minister to one another as we come together in the body of Christ. So I have entitled this first uh, point, Our Giftedness Belonging. This is the status of believers. By virtue of the gifts that we have received, we are called to belong. To belong in the body of Christ. We are saved so that we may belong, and those two are never separate. And how do we know this? The gifting of the Spirit. The gifting of the Spirit is given so that I may belong. You're not sent into the body of Christ without you belonging. You may say, well, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a new believer. I really don't know how I belong. You will soon find out. Because the Spirit of God will show you through his gifting, how you are part, an integral part in the body of Christ. And it's more than just sitting in a pew. Sitting in the pew to hear the word of God is a very important part. We assemble, and we're going to see why. We assemble to hear God's word, and God uses that word to then begin to reveal unto us what it is that he's calling us to do and it has to do with our belonging in the body of Christ. I ask you this morning, have you been gifted by the Holy Spirit? What is that gifting? Have you been enabled by the Spirit of God to belong in the body? And through that enablement of the Spirit, serve one another in the body of Christ. If you notice... Um, here in this passage, in verse 12, it says, For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. It says, and we're going to talk about pastors and teachers coming up soon, but because the, the topic of pastors and teachers is a topic in itself, I've decided to, to set it aside and deal with it later. But one of the gifts that he has given is to, for, to some is to be pastors and teachers. But then that's not just the only gift. He's given others. He's given everyone in the body of Christ a gift. That's why verse 7 says, to each one, to each one of us, grace was given. Grace was given to each one. To some, it was to be apostles and evangelists and prophets and pastors and teachers. And we'll deal with that because their ministration is the ministry of the word of God. And whatever we do in the church is always, always founded upon and dependent upon the ministration of God's word. So if you notice, and we'll have more to say on that, it is these pastors and teachers and prophets and apostles, they equip the saints. They are the ones that give to the saints the resources so that they may do something. What? What is it that they may do? For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Wow. Who's supposed to do the work of the ministry? It says here, who? The saints. Yes, the saints. You just raise your hand and say, I'm supposed to do it. I'm supposed to do the work of the ministry. What is, what is, what are pastor teachers supposed to do? Equip? 
you. In our calling, we're supposed to equip you so that you may do the work of ministry. For thee, then, building up, edifying, construction of the body of Christ. So you see the dynamics there. He has given to all gifts. The gifts are given to all so that we may belong. And how do we belong in the body of Christ? Through a community of mutual service. One another service as a community of the redeemed. He's, that, that is the occupation of the kingdom. What's the occupation of the kingdom? Serving one another. Serving one another. That's how the kingdom grows. That's how the kingdom edifies itself. So in order for that to happen, in order for us to serve, he has not left us without the enablement. And he has then given each one of us a gift. And we'll probably have more to say on that in, in other um, in other portions of Scripture, we don't want to take much time on the gifts of the Spirit. But a gift of the Spirit is any enablement of the Spirit of God in your life by which you can serve somebody else in the body of Christ. It may be something as simple as encouraging. Encouragement is a gift of the Spirit. When you encourage, when you find yourself Somehow being drawn to encourage someone. And when somehow you begin to look or you come to church and, and somehow you feel always pulled to say, who could I encourage today? That is a gift of the Spirit. That is a gift of the Spirit. If you come to church and say, man, what, what needs doing in the church? What, what is it that needs help? The Bible talks about gifts of service, of service, of doing. Uh, the people that work in the kitchen have a gift of service in that area, in that regard. There are those that work in, in cleaning. There are those that are always asking, who can I take a, uh, who can I go, whose house can I go to and just help him out? That's a gift of serving, just serving in whatever needs the saints may have. I'm just mentioning randomly just a couple of the gifts. There, there are many. The Bible mentions many gifts by which when we come together, we come together to connect through mutual works of service. Obviously, if you notice then, church is not just coming to church on Sundays. Because how do you do mutual works of service only on Sundays? <laughs> yes, when we come together, we come to celebrate. We come to gather as the assembly of those that throughout our lives and throughout the week have been engaging in what? In mutual works of service. And how? By the enablement, by the empowering of the Spirit in my life. It is by doing that that I can truly say, I belong. I belong. You say, Pastor, I'm not sure I, I belong. Well, you're called to belong. You're called to belong in that body of Christ because he has enabled you with a gift. He has called you with a specific gift so that you may belong in the mutual service, in relationships of mutual service for, it says, edification. What's edification? It's growth. It's growth. And this edification, like I said, it's not just numbers. You may have a small community like ours, where indeed people are growing. They're edifying themselves. Say, I want to be edified. Say, how many of you have, have said that, right? Man, I was edified today, right? Sometimes that's fine. We hear words say, I was really edified. Well, you're not really edified until that translates into action. You may have been inspired. You may have been touched by the word of God. You may have heard a word that really struck a chord. But the edification of the body... Uh, uh, as it is represented here, is that growth that happens as a result of our giftedness belonging. Of my receiving of grace, a gift of God, and then my putting it to action in the body of Christ through those mutual relationships of service. Notice what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 
Um, I'm sorry, Ephesians 2, verses 21 and 23. Ephesians 2, verse 21 and 23 says, In whom the whole building being fitted together. You see that? Now, obviously, the building is not just this building. We have, we've had to do a lot of work in this building. Okay? It is the illustration of a building. Bricks and bricks, they go together, plank with plank, wood with wood. Right? It says, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows. When are we going to grow? When we are fitted together. How are we fitted together our giftedness in the Spirit for works of service? And we're going to have more to say because it's not just about the gifts of the Spirit. We're also going to make the case that it's also about the fruit of the Spirit. And we'll see that connection when we get there. But for now, we are called in salvation to belong. We are called in, sal in salvation to belong in the body of Christ as we are fitted together. And we are fitted together by the gifts, the enablement of the Spirit of God in my life so that I may serve somebody. So that I may serve um, the people that belong in the body with me. And notice that nobody gets left out because everyone has been what? Gifted of the Spirit to belong. In the body of Christ. Verse 22. In whom it says grows in a holy temple in the Lord. A holy temple in the Lord. So we grow as a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Ah, oh, interesting. The Lord is building a dwelling place. You notice the emphasis in the Old Testament with building the Lord a sanctuary, right? You, you, have you seen that emphasis in the Old Testament? All of a sudden, one day, David builds a temple. God has said, build me a house. And David said, I'm going to build you a temple. But obviously, God says to David, not you. You've been, you've had too much blood in your hands. That's okay. You had your calling and your appointment. I'm going to raise somebody that's going to build me that temple. Solomon builds him a temple. But the question is, was it about that physical temple? It's never been. When David says, oh, here I am in a palace. I'm going to build you a temple because you dwell in tents. God says, who says that I inhabit temples built by human hands? So God did not reject the idea but he still had a plan with building a temple, a physical temple, because it served as a type. It served as a symbol of the spiritual temple. Who is the temple of the Holy Spirit now? You and I fit it together. Not you by yourself. Not you by yourself. You and I fit it together. That's why the Bible says, it doesn't say wherever there is one. Gather in my name. Well, you don't gather one, do you? You never gather one. One is just one just is. You may be a Christian, but you're not in the temple if you're just one. Wherever there is two or three gathered in my name, God has come to save sinners and to put them in a community of the redeemed. Life with God is life in community. And we have missed that big time. We here in America have missed that big time. Why? Because after all, we are the product of a culture that emphasizes what? Individuality, right? Yes, it's me, myself, my, my little hut, my little place. You know, I got all the resources. I can build myself up by the bootstraps. And that also translates into our Christian lives. But that, I want you to think about that notion and reject it and say, that's not biblical. God has called us to belong in the body of Christ. And I am going to grow in the measure that I live out the calling to belong. And I am going to belong as I then get in touch and move into action by the enablement 
of the Spirit of God who has gifted me in grace so that I may serve others in this community of faith. Isn't that a great plan? That's a plan of God. That's what you and I were, were made to be and how to live. Have I made the connection between my giftedness and belonging in the body? Have I come to realize that God dwells in the midst of the temple? Who is the temple? The body of Christ assembled in his name. He says, there in their midst, I want to have a dwelling place. Have you come to think of that? That we are being edified so that God may dwell among us. Oh, God dwells in me. That's fine. We don't doubt that. But we need that God dwelling in you here so that we all may dwell together in him. As a matter of fact, it is precisely God's plan to bring you here so that he may dwell in our midst. So that he may reveal himself in the assembled body. And it's just not bringing us here on Sunday again, I repeat. We come on Sunday, the Lord has established the Lord's day. The Lord has established a day when we come to celebrate as the gathered people. Folks, we live in a day and age that this individuality is really, is really doing a lot of damage to our souls. We, we have our, our self-to-do packet, and we just pitch our tent anywhere. Oh, I'm in church today. Where are you? I'm here in Miami Beach with my friends. This is my temple, my church. You know people say that? No, it's not. You're disobeying the Lord. That's not what pleases God. You don't pitch your temple somewhere and say this is a church. God has established his body. He has given his gifts so that we may belong in the mutual service. And we're going to get to the part where he has put preachers and teachers. Because at the end of the day, we're only going to belong and engage in mutual works of service when we are transformed by the preaching of his word. When the word of God pierces and grips our hearts powerfully and the revelation of God is explained, expounded week in, week out, causing faith to rise in our hearts. And when faith is made to rise in our hearts and we see Christ for us, the Holy Spirit then produces the fruit and the gifts and calls us to belong and to act in works of service and in love, which is the fruit of the Spirit. Now, we're called to belong and, and engage in mutual works of service through the enablement of the Spirit so that we may grow. Now, what is this growth fundamentally? Don't be mistaken. You can have a small church and not have any growth. You can have a large church and not have any growth. You can have a large church and it being very, being really engaged in a lot of growing. You can have a small church also that is growing. So what does it come down to then? What does a growing church come down to? Well, it says, we already read in verses 21 and 22 of Ephesians 2, that we being fitted together grow into a holy temple in whom you're also built being built together for a dwelling place of God. In other words, our salvation calling calls for growth in Christ, into Christ as our head. Verse 15 of Ephesians 4 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into Him. Into Him who is the head of Christ. What is this growth about? Christ as our head determines our identification, our purpose, our agenda. God aims at the sanctification, the cleansing, the setting aside for his purposes of the individual members of the body. What is this growth about? God aims at sanctifying you into Him, into Christ. In other words, God wants to conform you into Christ. What should you see to see if you are growing? Or if we are growing in Christ, you should have members 
that see themselves growing into the likeness of Christ. That's the fruit of the Spirit. We should see members that are growing into conformity with Christ. That's how we see that we are growing. And that will, let me tell you something. There is not a member that will be filled of the Spirit, growing into conformity with Christ, that would not then be fitting himself into the body of Christ. Every member that is Spirit-filled and that is growing into conformity with Christ will never, hear me out, would never ever fail to find himself in the body of Christ. These are very practical tips. How do I know that I'm growing? You desire the church. How do I know that I'm growing? You desire the church because the fruit of the Spirit is abundant in your life. How do I know that I'm growing? You desire the body of Christ because by the Spirit of God in your life, you want to serve others in this body, and your life goes and rides on it. If you don't see that, hear me out. Your growth has become stagnant and you need to examine yourself. You need to repent. You need to come before God and say, God, please, please, why am I cold? Why am I lukewarm? Why do I not desire the body of Christ? Why do I not want to? Why do I feel great at work but not great in church? Why do I feel great? Saturday night or Monday night watching football, but not great serving the saints. Why, Lord? Who do you desire? Who do you prefer? Why do I feel great with Mr. Joe from workplace and having lunch with him, but not great with the saints of God? Why, Lord? There's something fundamentally missing. Fundamentally that needs to be perfected. If that is where you're at today. And that's the reason why we're not growing. I'm not saying that that's the case here. I'm just saying that on a principle level, that's the reason a church does not grow. If that happens in one, and it happens in two, and it happens in three, and, and, and it then it's happen, if it happens in the leadership of a church, if the leadership of the church is such that they have become lukewarm and they don't desire to walk in the body of Christ. And they have become the self-doer kids that pitch tents somewhere. But they, they are not, they are not engaging deeply with zeal and passion and intensity and regularity in the body of Christ. Then you're going to have a church that, that needs to be disciplined of the Lord. You're going to have a body of Christ that will need to make adjustments, that will need to be, to, to be confronted by the Word of God. And how is he going to do He's going to say, I'm not comfortable in the body. I, I have put you all together so that I may dwell among you. But, but there are some pieces that need to be fitted. See, that these pieces here are hanging loose. These other pieces here are not fitted together. Get it together, he would say to us. Get it together. So that I may dwell in you as in a holy temple. And praise God that does, God does that. As long as he wants for there to be a church, he will do that. Some churches may fall under such discipline of God that he removes a lampstand. And the church ceases to exist. Why? Because the church ha is no longer serving God's purposes. This that we, It's just very simple. It's not complicated. It's just very simple. The church then will be disciplined or may just be dissolved. That's what we have in, in some of the sermons from God to in Revelation. I have this against you. You need to make this correction. You're doing well here in this area, but in this other area. Please hear, hear that I will not come against you and remove the lampstand. Remove the light that I have placed there so that you may assemble as a body of Christ. So we know what the growth is for. The growth is that we may grow in righteousness for the manifestation of His glory. We, we have it uh, here in Ephesians 2, 20 through 22. It says in Ephesians 2, we just read that. Ephesians 4 now, verses 20 through 24. Notice the practicality of, of how this sanctification works itself out. 
It says, but you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. This is what the work of God in the body. Through the enabling of the spirit, the gifting of the spirit, through our mutual works of service, through the connection with the fruit of the spirit, then this is the outcome. This is the result in individual members. This is the result that we begin to see in a church that is growing in righteousness and in holiness. What is the fruit of the Spirit connection? Let's take a look at that. Equipped and edified members grow in Christ. If growth consists in our sanctification, namely being conformed to the image of Christ, then growth in the body in its members will look like people who are increasing in the love of God and the law of neighbor. Isn't that the aim of the law? That's the aim of the law. How do I know that I, as an individual, am growing when I increase in the love of God and in the love of neighbor? But especially, God is going to especially test this out in the love for the members in the body of Christ. That's why the Bible says preferring those that are of the faith. Do good to all, but it says especially to those of the family, of the family of Christ. There's something fundamentally lacking when you can do good to those outside, but somehow you don't find it in yourself to stay in this Gifted belongingness in the body of Christ and do good to one another. He's called you to belong here by belonging here and doing good to one another in love. Love, increasing in the love of God and the love of neighbor. Those are the family of Christ. Here, loving one another. Hence, being equipped and edified for this growth is inseparably tied to the fruit of the Spirit. There's two ways that we belong in the church. One, by our giftedness. Two, by our fruitedness. I don't know how that sounds. <laughs> but there's two ways. You become gifted and you become fruited. <laughs> the Holy Spirit brings gifts into your life and it bears fruit in your life and that's how you belong in the body of Christ. That's how you are put together and that's how you are fitted together in the body of Christ. It's tied to the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, our fruitedness belonging in the body. Namely, what is this about? To abide in the love of Christ and His love for one another. Isn't that what characterized the life of Jesus? Isn't that being conformed to the will of God? Well, he wants, to, he wants to do it in the body. He wants for us to increase in love for Him. And He wants then for us to increase in our love for one another so that our giftedness to help one another is always done in love. And that's a connection with the Spirit. The connection with the Spirit is that He has put us together so that we may serve one another, but that we may serve one another out of love. Love. That's the connection with the Spirit of God. Sometimes there are people serving, okay? Sometimes there's people doing things in church, but because this is about the, the matter of the heart, you always have to ask yourself in the service, God, check my heart. Check my motivation. God, God, why am I doing this? Why? Why do I do what I do? Am I doing it out of your enablement of the Spirit? Am I doing it out of the fruit of the Spirit in my life? Am I doing it out of love? Do I go up there again because I love these people? It's as simple as that, right? Do I go up there to whatever it is that I do in the body of Christ because I love them? If it is so, then you are an instrument of growth in the body of Christ. And that's what God wants to see happening in its individual members. That I may love you 
And how am I going to love you? That's why we need gifts and we need fruit. Fruit is the driving motivation and force. But you say, well, I love the what do I do now? Oh, God's taking care of that too. He's enabled you through the gifting. What do you do now? You pray with them. What do you do now? You encourage them. What do you do now? You serve them. What do you do now? You speak the word to them. What do you do now? You teach them. What do you do now? You lead. What do you do now? See? So he has given us a way to belong. There's no other way. If you're called to be, you're called to belong. If you're called to save, you're called to belong in the body of Christ. And we belong through the giftedness of the Spirit and the fruitedness. The fruit of the Spirit in my life. And how does this all happen? I'll finish with this. Galatians 5. Go to Galatians 5. How does this all happen? And this is the connection with the gospel. <laughs> Galatians 5 verse 6. How does, how does it all happen? Listen. Verse 6 of Galatians 5 says... For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails nothing but faith working through love. Faith working through love. How am I going to love? What's going to, what's, I don't love, Pastor, I just don't feel like loving anybody. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, we feel like that at times, right? I, I, I'm just not loving. I, I don't feel like doing anything for anybody, Pastor. I know. You need to be equipped. And we're going to come back next time and see how you're equipped for the work of ministry. What's the work of ministry? Loving and serving. And we're going to see how you're going to be equipped so that you may love and that you may serve. And that happens by the ministry of the Word of God. If you feel like you're not loving, you don't feel like serving, what you need to do is hear God's Word. Because the Bible says that faith comes by what? By hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. And that's why you have this distinction where God in this passage only deals with those that equip the church, even though He mentioned those that do the work of ministry but he wants to emphasize which i didn't touch on that today but that is part of the emphasis in this in this uh passage we're going to come back to that that those that preach to you the word of god they have received the ministry of putting before you the power the power that can transform your heart so that you may become a loving servant of christ and how does that happen faith that works. But notice that it's what? At the bottom of it all is what? Faith. And how do you come by faith? You hear the Word of God. And what do you hear in the Word of God? Namely, the Gospel. When you hear of one that has served you. <laughs> I wanted to start here, but I left it for the end. I'm out of time. <laughs> we'll come back to this. When you hear of one that has loved you, hear me out, folks. You may be powerless, and we all are. We're powerless in ourselves. We don't love. We don't love right. We're deficient. We, we don't do the things that, we're, that we need to do. We're powerless. But come and hear God's word. And the Bible says that by the ministration of the gospel, God's word spoken unto you, you're going to hear of one that has served you. You're going to hear of one that has loved you. You're going to hear of one that has held nothing back so that you may be well, so that you may be enriched, so that you may be saved, so that you may have a future, so that you may be delivered from all the forces of, of hell. I don't know about you, but when I hear that, something rises in me. What rises in me? Love. So when I hear that, the Spirit produces faith in me. Faith is, I trust you, Lord. I believe, I believe that. I believe it, Lord. I believe you have loved me so. If you truly believe he has loved you so, 
then you'll be empowered in love because then that spirit through faith works in you the love for the Savior. I love you, Jesus. The love of the Savior that begins to be expressed in gratitude. The love of the Savior that begins to be expressed in worship, in praise, in adoration. And as you do that, that love for the Savior, knowing that you've been forgiven, what's it going to do? It's going to begin then to tie you horizontally and asking, Oh, my Lord, I can't believe you've done this for me. I've got to tell others. And now that you've done it for me, you've served me. Lord, how can I serve others in that love? You see how simple it is? You see how simple it is? And you notice how it all goes down to faith. I want to submit to you and leave you with this. That if you are service cold, if you are church cold, if you are member service cold, if somehow there's coldness in your life of service, it goes ultimately down to an issue of your faith. It goes to an issue of your faith. And you need to hear again the word of the gospel. You may, just need to, you, you may not just need to hear what you need to do. No. You may just need to hear again what's been done for you. The gospel. C.J. Mahaney, in some of his messages, he's written the cross-centered life. And his messages are so cross-centered. Google him up. He's been ministering to me lately with his sermons and messages. And he says, we need to rehearse the gospel. We need to hear it again and again. We need to speak to our soul the reminders of the gospel, the rehearsings of the gospel in our lives, because ultimately, then that will blow us up into a life of praise and worship unto Him and into a life of service to a church that's very defective, to a church that sometimes is lacking so much. But if one of you gets blown up like this, revived like this, the church will feel its impact and it is contagious. Hear me out. It is contagious. That is revival. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Father, I pray that we may grasp these truths that even though they are simple, they are very deep. We pray that you may give us ears to hear it. We pray, Father, that as we hear the gospel again and again, Lord, we will be transformed, changed into the image of Christ. Oh, Father, driven by your love, by your spirit of love to love you, to, be, to feel ourselves indebted, and in that indebtedness of love, to pour ourselves out in service, knowing that when I pour myself out in love, there will be a gift ready to catch me. There will be a gift ready there to lock with me so that I may pour that love out who is none other than Christ himself, working in the midst of the body. We love you. Teach us to love you more. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you all.